JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, that is on the channel, because today is the 12th of September 2022. So yeah, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Monday's morning session where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So yeah, the content we produce does not constitute an investment advice or investment recommendation. Should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, as always, a quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JFDbrokers.com website, which you can always check out for more information about us. So, yep, visit JFDbrokers.com. Now then guys, uh, jumping into the charts. So, the first one I want to pick up here is Nikkei 225. So, before I kind of, uh, before the big pause of, you know, between the videos here, um, the last time I talked about this, and in general, by the way, I just want to go through the same instruments that I went through on, um, on, on Wednesday, um, just to kind of see, you know, what happened here and, and how everything kind of unrattled. <clears throat> so, uh, with the Nikkei 225, so uh, last time I talked about this, I said that, look, keep your eyes on this upside support line. If it provides support, if it, a good hold up, we could see a nice rebound from it and a push higher. Well, initially I was, I was actually targeting the, um, the highlighted territory right here. Um, but um, actually it exceeded my expectations and it kind of went a little bit further. So we have uh, a few nice runaway gaps here. So we one gap, one gap here, one gap there, and the third one there, right there. So basically mission accomplished on this one, I would say. Um, and uh, yeah, it went nicely to the upside, further upside. Um, previously what I talked about was that if we um, kind of climb back above this highlighted territory, then yes, uh, higher levels could be met. Now at the moment, I will be on a little bit on the careful side. Um, of course, I'm leaning a little bit more towards the upside right now. Um, but um, let's go slowly on this. Um, first of all, that we, given the fact that we had a good run already, so maybe something like this could be possible. Now, um, what I w I'm also considering here is that this kind of a move here could be possible maybe from around here, let me just bear with me, there, there we go, from around this 28,793 territory, approximately around there. Now, what I'm expecting basically, and maybe to see another um, bit of, a, another kind of push higher, maybe, you know, the, uh, the index stalling somewhere around here, and then maybe correcting back to the downside. However, don't get me wrong, I mean, if we start correcting already earlier, and for example, if we do see the uh, the European and the U.S. indices today uh, pushing lower somehow, then yeah, maybe we'll get this a little correction earlier. Um, basically, in what I'm trying to say here is that even if we do see a correction a little bit lower, um, as long as we stay above this highlighted territory right here, which is approximately between the 28,208 and the 28,222 levels, so. Uh, like I said, approximately around here. Now, um, if we do correct back down, so yeah, we could get a hold up somewhere around here, maybe a rebound from here, and then go to the upside. Um, long story short, um, as long as we stay above this highlighted territory right here, I'm going to continue aiming to the upside. Uh, but I'm really curious what's going to happen here when you're this 28,794 level right here. Will we get a little temporary hold up or not? Let's wait and see. 
uh, showing high composite. So this one's also pushing nicely to the upside. As you, as you remember, when I talked about the Shanghai composite, I said that as long as we stay in this, in between these two trend lines right here, I will remain uh, neutral. Um, if you do like to trade something like that, okay, wonderful, great. You can utilize that. You can, you, you know, exploit that. Um, but at the moment, um, for me, that's like I said, I'm just observing it, and uh, I'm waiting for a clear breakout through the uh, through one of these uh, trend lines. Now, um, again, I will re redo my some of my levels right here, and I think it, it would be for the best. Um, so basically, for the upside, if you're looking for some extra content confirmation maybe a push up of that 3295 territory could do the trick here that's mark uh, that marks the uh, I think the highest point yep the highest point of August here um, if you clear that that yeah that could open the door to us uh, so it was the upside towards that 200 EMA and maybe even further north <clears throat> for the downside not only that I need to see a break of this lower side lower side of the veg um, but also maybe a drop below that 3172 level ASX 200, the Australian index. Uh, so yeah, we beautiful reversal. However, I have to admit, not everything really planned out, worked out here as uh, expected. Now, what I can see here, first of all, this upside line didn't work. Okay, so that happens. Well, we have to accept accept that when it happens because it not always it works out great. I mean, like for example, here Nikkei worked out nicely, perfectly. Um, ASX not really, so that's why I will remove it. Um, and uh, I think I cannot. No, no, it's not really a deal here, so I'll remove it in total. But um, also, what I can say here is that uh, first of all, this arrow does has to go somewhere. Maybe I'll reuse it here. Um, and what's interesting here as well that it it, um, it moved uh, a little bit lower here um, it, it went and tested this uh, this little hurdle here, this inside swing high of the 8th of July, um, and uh, that's roughly around that 6,694 territory, which um, mm, which I'm going to keep an eye on, of course, now, because um, it's going to be quite interesting to see what's going to happen. Um, and, uh, yep, if we, um, if we break below this whole hurdle here, uh, we can see that this, this the, the index found good support near that 6,700 territory, actually. Okay, so if we do drop below all this area right here, then yes, I'll consider the downside. At the moment, even if it retraces back down somewhere here, um, let's say after, let's say, a hold up near this hurdle, um, I'm not going to really, you know, get excited with the downside. I'm going to aim, I'm going to aim lower only on a break of this 6,700 territory at least. Now, in terms of the upside, um, looking at this picture here, I would say um, it's a bit of a difficult one. Um, if you're um, if you're looking for some upside, then yes, maybe uh, a push above this this barrier could be good uh, because at the same time uh, we would climb above the 100-day uh, EMA here. So. Yeah, it's again. I would I wouldn't say that it's a really uh, clear picture here. It it still has you know problems. I think this is the this was the level. That, I mean, I wasn't here, but this was the level that could have worked out perfect here. I mean, this inside swing high of the sixth of September. But okay, that that's already pa in a, in the past. Um, Maybe some of you could look at it as a you know potential kind of breakout level for the downside. However, uh, you know we do have uh, a problem somewhere in the, around here then near the 6,800 level. Either way, um, for now let's say let's put it this way: if we do climb above this 6,943 territory, and we excuse me, and we push above that 100 day EMA, then yes, I'll go for higher levels. Uh, DAX, the German index. So, um, good move, good move to the upside. Okay, good reversal. Um, still, I'm keeping an eye on this level here, this 12,600 zone. Um, we had a reversal from it, and now we are. Uh, we now <clears throat> on Friday we've tested that 21-day EMA together with a bunch of these levels here, the 13,085 level, for example. So, which I talked about previously, and I said that look, if we 
push through it, then yeah, I'll go a little bit higher. If we um, if we struggle, then maybe we could see a reversal a little bit to the downside. Currently, the index is trading at around 13,162, 13, so that's above this barrier. So, yep, that's a good sign. So, maybe we could go further north, guys. So keep that in mind um, but at the moment yep I would say I am aiming higher uh, slowly uh, not really something drastically but aiming higher slowly and uh, as long as we stay above that 21 day EMA I'll continue aiming for the upside in the near term because don't forget that overall we're trading below this downside line taken from the high of the 5th of January which means that what we're seeing right now this move higher which we're seeing right now could be just classed as a temporary correction before another possible leg of selling. <clears throat> Um, Nasdaq 100 so beautiful reversal here from this highlighted territory I talked about this and well there we go so uh, rever reversed um, pushed back to the upside and most importantly we climbed back above this um, upside support line and also we've actually managed to break the downside scenario sorry downside scenario downside <laughs> trend line and uh, there we go um, currently the cash index is sitting at around 12,582 um, um, that's actually somewhere near where it closed on, on Friday. Um, I would say this way, we can get rid of this downside line. I think that's no longer needed. Um, for now, I'm going to keep an eye on this upside line. Although, don't get me wrong, we have violated it as well. Um, so, I would say, yeah, if we are looking for um, some higher levels, then yeah as long as it stays above this upside line then yeah we could go further north if we um, if we somehow manage to drop back be below this upside line this of course increases the chances for uh, the index to drift lower however I would still prefer to see a drop below this whole area right here this area around that psychological 12,000 mark. If we do drop below it again, then well, this is where it could turn out to be ugly for uh, some seller, uh, for some, sorry, for some, uh, for some buyers, for the sellers, it would be great. Um, so yeah, but um, at the moment, I would say this, the buyers kind of are in the lead a little bit. Um, however, it can be, it can quickly change. Uh, just, you know, uh, let's see again, let's see how all this is gonna play out. D uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. So yeah, good reversal, good push back to the upside. Um, okay, this vi this upside line got violated, um, but in a way, it kind of played out nicely because why because uh, we did get a violation here we drifted lower then it reversed back to the upside and then the on Thursday the index retraced back down tested this upside line rebounded nicely from it and then moved uh, nicely further north uh, we've almost came close to testing that um, this downside line taken from the high of the 16th of August um, at the moment the cash index is sitting at around 32,162 uh, so basically around the same area where it closed on Friday uh, and we're still below this downside line taken from the high of the 16th of August so yeah if you're looking for some higher levels guys wait for a clear breakout through that area because at the same time we would climb above the 21 day EMA um, this arrow has to go I think we'll I'll redo some of these levels here so the, I'll mark the high of Friday the high last week uh, near the 32,227 um, I think it's time to mark some of the higher levels as well uh, just for the you know for the kind of uh, not for the sake of it but just you know that, that these are going to be the targets if we do break this downside line and uh, stay above it uh, and we also if we do climb above that 32,227 zone and then we'll go yeah we'll go from there now um, looking at the uh, other picture here mm, DXY uh, the dollar index look at this reversed back to the downside and boom there we go we drifted lower now what I'm gonna do here is I think I need to re redraw the chart a little bit let me tidy up because um, I think it will be a little bit on the easier side now I'll bring back the 
uh, the trend line here uh, because I think that's a good one right there. Um, at the moment what we're seeing is a little correction before another possible leg of buying. Overall, if we jump from the fact that we are still above the uh, upside support line. However, um, now I don't look at these indicators very often. However, looking at the MACD right now, it's giving us a signal that, yeah, there is a potential to, for this one to move lower so we've dropped below the signal line so okay so this you know could be an interesting one however again what, what I don't really um, that's why I always say that you know I don't really purely rely on the on the on these indicators because for example okay let's say here back back in March mid-March we did drop below the uh, the back D but actually we had a bit of divergence here and then the, yeah it was drifting uh, lower here but actually the XY was climbing higher so so that's why you know be on the careful side when when you're looking at this these just kind of you know it can accompany you uh, your decision but the, your decision should probably be based on something else um, now uh, looking at this picture okay so first of all I want to bring back the line which I had here this one which I talked about previously this 109.29 um, which we dropped and we now drop we're dropping back below it so yeah so that's a good interesting sign here for the sellers um, if we continue to trade below this hurdle I would say yes I will go for this upside support line taken from the low of the 10th of February. If we do push back above this 109.29, yes, this could mean that maybe there could be a chance for the, you know, for the bulls to step in again. However, in now I would prefer to wait for a push above the 110.79 level, somewhere approximately around here. That's the high of last week and the current highest point of September. Gold. Um, gold, guys. Uh, so, okay, this one's quite interesting. Um, now, again, I, I don't want to say anything maybe yet, but um, first of all, the fact that it's holding, still getting a hold up near this 1728 level, <clears throat> that's kind of, you know, raising a few concerns here in the in the bull block, uh, but um, not really the seller's game yet, not really the bear's game yet. So um, for me to start looking at some lower levels, I would like to see a drop somewhere below this highlighted territory right here. I would start off with the 1689 level and then go slowly go lower, lower, lower. And eventually if we do end up dropping below that 1677 zone, that's where more sellers could join in, guys. Now, uh, why I'm being very careful with the uh, with the upside scenario is, uh, again, this little formation, again, depending on sometimes on the charts, and uh, I don't want to say that this is a, a rising wedge, but it might be the case. However, not an ideal one. So again, that's why, in a way, I'm, it, it seems like I'm trying to see something uh, here where it's not. So where there maybe it's not actually the rising wedge. So, you know, again, it's uh, something like this maybe. So um, could be the case. If it is the case, then, well, guess what? I mean, such patterns tend to break to the downside. And uh, I already talked about this several times when we had these patterns on other instruments. And, well, they did work out to the, you know, to the downside. If it's a rising wedge, if it's a falling wedge, it's to the upside. Then, um, but again, it's uh, it's a bit of a tricky one. That's why I'm, I would wait for a clear, I will keep this on the chart. Don't get me wrong. I'll, I'll see if this is going to work out or not. But in that in that case, if I'm looking at something like that, then um, I'm waiting for a breakout through one of the sides of this uh, of this potential pattern. Um, if we do break the lower side here, then yes, I'll go lower, but with a tight stop loss because this could end up, you know moving lower breaking this uh, like for example something like here on the 7th of September it could do the same thing and then reverse back to the upside so so yeah don't uh, uh, don't kind of purely also rely on this so maybe um, if you're a little bit on the cautious side you could keep an eye on something like um, something like this here, maybe the drop below Thursday's low, something could do the trick here, 1708, and then we could go from there. Uh, WTI oil, guys, so, okay, we got a nice move, I would say, 
Mm, I want to repeat what I was talking about previously. I said that, look, my, my target is here. Um, in my previous videos, I talked about this. The, 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 the fact that I've drawn the, my arrow this way um, was not to make it very, very tiny. Um, so this is what I was talking about uh, last week as well. I said that, look, if we do drop below that 85.74 territory, I'll go lower. My next target will be around the 81.94, which we managed to reach. That's the low of the 24th of January. So we managed to reach that area test it, rebound it from it, and push back to the upside. Now, uh, this arrow has to go, or actually I can redraw it maybe, yep, uh, for the upside. That's the area that I'm going to be looking at, this uh, 90.58. If we do push above it, then yeah, we'll go, uh, we'll go higher, or we could go higher. Um, and then we could go towards that 97.65 and so on and so on with the downside. Now, I, I'm still leaning overall, I'm still leaning towards the downside, but at this point I would need to see a drop below that 81.94 zone and then uh, yeah, we, we, I could this could attract potentially more sellers into the game. Now, uh, Bitcoin, very quickly on that one, uh, beautiful reversal, look at this. This is a, honestly roller coaster ride i mean it just uh some one day it's moving lower one day it's moving higher but uh one thing for sure that when i talked about this i said that look my downside scenario is from around here the 17,567 which is the lowest point of june and uh, i said that look i will go i'll get more excited with the downside if we do drop below this hurdle here the 17 if uh, five, six, seven. Um, we didn't. We drifted a little bit closer to that, reversed back to the upside, and pushed back up. Must this highlighted zone here? I'll just remind you again. This highlighted zone is the are the highs of of the uh, December 2017. Basically, this uh, first big rally uh, that we had here in history uh, in in the crypto world. And uh, yeah. And, it's kind of still oscillating around that zone. Um, a while ago, when I was talking about the crypto world, um, I said that, look, these are the levels that I'm targeting here when we were still sliding here. I said that these are the interesting ones here. This is the area. Now, from here, can we get that pop to the upside? Well, again, at the moment, um, oh, I think I grabbed the wrong one. Uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, I grabbed the wrong, grabbed the wrong one. I think this might do the trick, I hope. Um, just bear with me one moment. Uh, no, I can't. Come on. Uh, okay, okay, zoom in. Ugh, okay, uh, there we go. That's the peak that I'm talking about here. Okay, 19,892. Perfect. Okay, okay, guys, sorry for that, uh, but I just wanted to get this right. Mm. So now the question is, can we break this downside line? Of course, this is all the all the crypto enthusiasts are kind of hoping for that. Um, let's wait and see. Again, I would say if we do break this downside line, I would say yes, I would go higher. But initially, I'll aim for that twenty five thousand three hundred thirty eight zone. If we do clear this, great, uh, we'll go higher. But um, if we don't, then we might end up maybe in a something of a range here. But I'm not talking about that yet. I don't want to overcomplicate things. Um, but let's see. Yeah, let's see how this is going to play out. Um, AUD USD. So we're pushing back above the neckline. Again, uh, the idea worked out perfectly because I said to you that I'm looking at this as a head potential head and shoulders pattern. We broke the neckline. We moved lower. My target was the 0 0.6680. We reached, uh, I would say almost reached it, but I would say that's a good accomplishment. Um, we kind of maybe reached only like around 90%. You know, we did 90% and maybe we left or 95% here and then kind of f missed out on the other remaining thing. But hey, uh, this part of the game, sometimes that happens. So it's not always a perfect hit hit of a level so we i've said it before so yeah guys you need to just take that sometimes and if you're aiming for something like this for example i was aiming for uh let's say the way i do it like sometimes i'm aiming for a certain level and i can then if i see it doesn't really go there or struggling to go there all the way there then i'm gonna just take my profit and just kind of enjoy you know because you, sometimes you get this it reverses to the upside and then well um now uh 
going uh, towards the upside here. Now I'm leaning a little bit more towards the upside. I'm, I can redo this neckline right now. I think I can. What I can do here is I can draw something like this. And if we do break this downside line, then yeah, I'll go uh, for higher levels. I'll break the. I, I will go for the uh, for the 21 day EMA and this downside line. So basically, if we do clear all that, then yes, I'll go higher. Um, if we struggle to do to do so, maybe we could go for the to the downside again. Um, and this is where I'm gonna aim again for this little hurdle is 0 0.6771. If we drop below it, I'll go lower um, not drastically to the downside but somewhere to uh, this area first uh, and then we'll take it from there USD JPY so uh, did reverse um, okay so that's fine finally I said to you that look if we had a good rally like, um, excuse me like that then um, a bit of a retracement care could be possible at some point it will it will eventually go down uh, it reached almost reached that 145 level look at this guys 144.99 beautiful so we established a new good level here the 145 zone so if we're looking for some higher levels we need to see a break of that area um, if we don't get that break then yes um, uh, we will uh, maybe ha end up you know hanging around somewhere around here um, again something to draw here as well um, this upside support line taken from the low of the uh, 11th of August so <clears throat> Now then, um, if we are looking at some lower levels, then um, then basically I'm looking at this area right here. Um, first of all, of course, I'll keep an eye on this upside line. If we do break it, okay, wonderful. We'll, we could go a little bit lower, um, but if we... Um, if we do drop below this 139.39 zone, then yes, I will go to the downside even more. So let's see how this is going to play out. For now, there's still hope that the bulls can, you know, recover somewhere near this upside line. And uh, if, if so, then, uh, yeah, we could see a nice reversal here, a push back to the upside. However, for me at this point now, I will keep an eye on the 145 level in order to go further north. USDCHF, before I run out of time, um, again, um, so we... Uh, that's one of the reasons why I said that, look, the 0 0.9886 area, that's what I'm watching. That's what I want to see here, a break off in order to go higher. Um, on the, this one, the upside support line, I said that if we do break it, I will go lower. We, we got that break, we went lower, and uh, yeah, we ended up going all the way here towards these other EMAs here, like the 100 EMA and even this 0 0.9578 zone. So... Um, long story short, um, if we now, we're now getting a hold up near this 0 0.9578, so okay, uh, good, uh, can we see maybe a bit of a retracement here, or something like that, rebound, but basically if we do fall again below this hurdle, I will go for that 200 day EMA. Um, I will have my arrow here drawn, this is my ideal scenario, but um, I will initially aim only for the 200 day EMA, and then I'll go from there. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna eventually put this uh, arrow. Hey, it's gonna be a small one, but hey, we can at least refer to it back then. So basically, that's what I'm gonna be aiming here for this 208 day EMA if we do drop below this 0 0.9578 zone. GBPUSD, so uh, beautiful push to the upside. Of course, the weaker dollar helped out this pair. We've reversed uh, higher, and uh, this idea that I talked about previously, I said that look, if we do reverse higher, but then struggle to overcome this downside line, then another decline could be possible. But we managed to break this downside line. Okay, so great. Uh, we could now go higher. I think a few adjustments have to be made here. Um, this arrow now will look something like this. So I'm basically, I'm gonna keep an eye on this 1.1639 territory right here. So if we push above it, I'm, I'm aiming initially only for that 21 day EMA. This highlighted zone, I think I will remove it. I'll put it here uh, for our future reference here. And uh, yeah, if we, um, if we clear this this barrier here, then yeah, I'll go for that 21-day EMA. If we push through it, then then uh, the next target is the 17 uh, 1.17 1.1760, and so on and so on. At the moment, I it's uh, it's some somewhat positive. 
but again uh, waiting for that clear more clear uh, confirmation break so um, so um, Oh, and by the way, in terms of the news, guys, uh, the reason why it's not really like popping very strongly right now because, well, we're getting, we got some bad GDP numbers from UK. A little bit on the lower side. Yep, um, a little bit on the lower side. Well, now in comparison to the expectation, uh, the expectation was for a zero point plus point zero three. Uh, it came out plus point zero uh, plus zero point two. Um, the previous one was actually minus 0, 0 0.6. So in a way better than the previous, but uh, worse than the forecast. Now maybe that's why it's not in the manufacturing production number as well that then came out on the lower side. However, better than the previous. Um, okay, maybe the market is digesting right now. Maybe you're thinking, hey, maybe not everything is that bad and maybe we'll get that further push higher later on. At the moment, yeah, we are, uh, we have this, um, this here if we uh, like I said at the moment the, the buyers are not really that um, strong but maybe everything if everything will uh, re get gets reevaluated then we'll see that the numbers are not really that bad so maybe the push will f got, come further later on uh, GPP JPY so this one is pushing nicely to the upside this one's reacting a little bit better here uh, we're clearing that 166.25 level I talked about this and also I talked about this idea of maybe seeing a bit of a reversal and also if you uh, remember I mean I've mentioned a while ago that look whenever we break a, a trend line or something like that like a downside or an upside one uh, we always kind of reverse back to the downside we go for that little correction back down test the uh, test the trend line from on the other side and then re and go back up so if it's working out again um, now we're breaking this 166.25 I'm leaning towards the upside as long as we stay above this barrier if we drop back below it, yep, I'm gonna take a bit of a cautious pause, and then then I'm gonna, um, then yeah, I'm gonna maybe consider maybe a move back down here. But um, at the moment we're above it, so let's see if we can stay above it. Euro JPY also getting a nice push, clearing this barrier. Look at this, the 144.25. I talked about this. We're clearing that barrier. We're going higher, and now the question is, can we see a further move north, guys? Um, this other level that I have here, now let me just put a monthly chart, I think, for that one. Yep, this other chart is, oh, sorry, other line is the 144.96. Um, that's the inside swing low of the, of the uh, December, or the lowest point of December of 2014, guys. Um, if we clear that level, the next target is a very comfortable 149.78. So let's see if we can reach that. At the moment, it looks like this. So we are on the right, the bulls are on the right track. Let's see if they can maintain that dominance. And finally, EURUSD, guys, 1.01 level, getting back to it. And, uh, yep, reversed. So basically, I talked about this. I said that, look, if we drop below this highlighted territory, the 0 0.9878, then, yeah, we could go lower here. We didn't. We reversed to the upside and now we're coming closer to testing this uh, this downside line taken from the high of the 10th of February now in order to go higher I would say uh, I would like to see a clear break through this downside line and uh, and uh, yeah if we uh, if we do clear this downside line then yeah I'll go higher if we um, if we stay below this downside line, then certainly, yes, there is still a possibility for, you know, for a reversal back down. So keep that in mind at the moment. In a way, it could still drift higher here, test this downside line, maybe reverse back down, maybe go back to this 21-day EMA. And then if it provides good good hold up, we could see a rebound and, a and then maybe a break of this downside line. So, you know, we, like I said, at the moment, uh, don't be surprised if you see something like that. So if we see this push higher uh, right now a test of this downside line maybe a hold up or reversal back down towards the 21 day EMA and then maybe from here a reversal to the upside and then a break of this downside line however that's a good theory again let's see if that's gonna work out or not but uh, the moment um, yeah I'm keeping an eye on this downside line guys 
So, I'll have to wrap it up here. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I really appreciate your time, guys. Your views, your likes, your comments, everything I really do. So, uh, sorry for going a little bit overboard with my time. But, uh, hey, it's um, I'm back um, from a bit of a holiday. So, uh, okay, let's, uh, let's resume on Tuesday, tomorrow. Uh, as always, at uh, 6 o'clock GMT time. For now, have a wonderful trading day. Stay safe. Have your stop losses in place. And everything will be fine. Thank you very much. And bye-bye.